In this video, we're going to do our last set of examples for related rates. And these are problems which all involve, you, it all involve volume. So our first example, we have a spherical balloon and it has a slow leak. Its volume is changing by 0 0.1 cubic centimeters every second. And we'd like to know how fast the diameter is changing when the diameter is 150 centimeters. So let's review our strategy. First thing, if we're not given a diagram, we want to draw a diagram of the situation. We want to determine what rate is given and what rate we are looking for. We'd like to find an equation which can connect those two rates. We'll differentiate that implicitly with respect to t, and we'll solve for the rate which is being asked for. And in the very last step, we'll evaluate that by substituting the given rate and other variables. So here we're looking at our spherical balloon. It has a radius, and remember the radius uh, twice the radius is the diameter. What do we know? The rate of change of the volume is negative 0 0.1. Why negative? Because we have a slow leak. Volume, the air is leaking out of the sphere, so the volume is decreasing. And what do we want to know? Well, the change in the diameter, so dd by dt, when the diameter is 150. The usual formula we know for the volume of a sphere is volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. But we want to have a formula with the diameter. So we need to do a little bit of algebra. The diameter is twice the radius, or the radius is half the diameter. So I should be able to just simply replace r with this half d in my formula and get a formula which ties v with d. And after doing some simplification, I find that volume is 1 sixth pi times diameter cubed. Differentiate both sides implicitly with respect to t, and I get dv by dt equals 1 half pi d squared times dd by dt. I can go ahead and solve that equation for dd by dt and evaluate it with dv dt being, uh, should be negative 0 0.1 and d equals 150. And so then my final answer after doing quite a bit of uh, arithmetic is negative 1 over 112,500 pi centimeters per second. In our second example, we have a conical water tank. So it has the shape of a cone. And the point, the vertex, is pointing downward. It has a radius of 4 feet, a height of 12 feet, and it's being drained at a rate of 1 half cubic feet per second. And we'd like to know at what rate is the height of the water in the tank changing when the height is 6 feet. So let's start with a diagram. 
our cone has a radius of four, it's 12 feet high. The water inside the tank forms a cone of water and we're gonna call its radius R and its height H. And we know that the volume is decreasing because the water is being drained. So negative one half. And we'd like to know what is dH dt when H equals six. So our volume formula for a cone is V equals one third pi R squared H. Now, V, R, and H, all three are changing with time. So in order to simplify the implicit differentiation, I would like to replace R with some formula for H. And to do that, I need to find an equation which relates R and H. And what, what I can use to help me do that are similar triangles. If I were to take a cross section of the cone and cut it in half, I would have two right triangles, one for the entire cone, one for the water inside the cone. Those are similar triangles. So I can form a ratio of the corresponding sides, set those ratios equal to each other. So in this case, R over four is going to be H over 12. And I'll solve that for R. R is one third H. So now I'll take this value, one third H, and replace that in my formula for the volume. So I'll have volume is one third times pi times h over three quantity squared times h, which will simplify to v equals one over 27 pi h cubed. The next step would be to differentiate implicitly with respect to t. That gives me dv dt is one ninth pi h squared times dh dt. And I should be able to solve that for dh by dt. That gives me nine times dv over dt all over pi h squared. And the last thing I need to do is the evaluation. I replace dv dt with negative one half. I replace h with six. And I'll get negative one over eight pi feet per second. So notice with these uh, answers, these evaluations, I don't use a decimal approximation. I always give the exact answer. So if it has pi in the answer, I just leave that as pi. I don't take out my calculator and use a decimal approximation for pi. The last example involves a water trowel, which has the shape of a trapezoidal prism. So the end of the water trowel is an isosceles trapezoid. That just means that the, uh, it is a truncation of an isosceles triangle. The slanting sides have the same length. And it's being filled with water at a rate of 0 0.5 cubic meters per minute. And we'd like to find at what rate is the height of the water changing when the height is 20 centimeters. So right away, I have to be very careful here. We'd like to use a consistent set of units. 
almost everything is given in terms of meters, uh, in particular, the volume, the change in the volume is given in cubic meters per minute. So I'm going to change this 20 centimeters from the original statement into meters. 20 centimeters is 0 0.2 meters. All right, what do we know? Well, the change in volume is 0 0.5. We'd like to know the change in the height, the h dt, when h equals 0 0.2. Now, what does h mean? Again, this is like the other water tank. Uh, the water inside the water trough itself is going to form its own trapezoidal prism. So the h we're talking about is the height of the water the height of the water inside the uh, water trowel. So the volume that I'm interested in is the volume of the water. So remember that the way we calculate the volume of a prism is we can take the area of the end and multiply it times the length. The end is a trapezoid. So that would be 1 half h in parentheses a plus b times l. a is going to be the top side of the trapezoid. b is the bottom. Now, of all of those letters or variables in the formula, not all of them are changing with time. In particular, the length of the water trowel does not change as the water fills up the water trough. And uh, the bottom side of the trapezoid does not change. It's only the top side that is getting bigger as the water depth increases. So I can replace B and L with those constant values. And so that simplifies now to where volume would be 5h parentheses a plus 2. I still need to do some more work because both h and a are functions of t. Both of them are increasing as t increases. And so uh, when I do the implicit differentiation, it would be much easier if I could write this as only one variable. In fact, if I could write this expression only using h, that would be uh, much easier. So what am I going to do? Some geometry and some algebra. If I look at the face of this uh, water trowel, and I have the depth of the water represented by this red line segment, I can see that my value of A, the top part of that trapezoid, is really going to be 2 plus 2w, where w is just the this part of this triangle uh, that I've cut off from the side here. And if I look, I actually have some similar triangles here. The big triangle coming from the entire water trowel, and the small triangle which comes from the water that is in the water trowel. So I can set up a proportion. W over 0 0.5 would be the same as H over 1, because the height of the entire water trowel is 1. So that means if I solve for W, W is just 0 0.5 H. And I can go ahead and substitute this 0 0.5 H into first my a equals 2 plus 2w. 
and simplify, that tells me that a equals two plus h. So I can take two plus h and put that in the place of a in my volume formula. So then I'm going to get v equals 5h times, in parentheses, 2h plus 2. And that will eventually simplify to 5h squared plus 20h. Now I only have one variable on the right hand side. And it's the variable I want because I'm trying to calculate dh by dt. So now I can differentiate implicitly with respect to t. That'll give me dv dt equals 10h dh dt plus 20 dh dt. I'll need to factor out the dh dt to solve for dh dt. And that will give me dv dt in the numerator and in the denominator, I'll have 10h plus 20. So last thing to do is the evaluation. And I replace dv dt with 0 0.5. I replace h with 0 0.2. And after a bit of arithmetic, I can write that as a fraction 1 over 44 meters per minute.